Okay, hello everybody, this is uh, Michael Bartler here. It has just gone past midnight um, on the morning of October 2nd, 2018. So uh, it's officially CX Day, so happy CX Day to everybody. I know my, my friend and colleague Anita out in Australia in Melbourne has probably already been celebrating for a little while now. So uh, hopefully I can add some content for the day before everybody here in America wakes up. So what I wanted to do was uh, just to do a quick little um, tip of the month that I want to start off for the CCXP exam. So a little bit about me. Um, I wrote the book CCXP exam preparation. Um, I published this in April 2017 and hundreds of people have used it uh, to pass the exam and then I earlier this year in 2018 rolled out the exam simulator and I'm about to roll out the prep cast as well so basically just materials to help CCXP candidates make sure that they're set up for success for their exam um, I'm a big lover of dogs anyone who owns my book probably already knows about Basil who you can see in the photograph here with me and there's his adopted sister also a rescue dog named uh, Mac as well so uh, a lot of the work that I do um, I take the money and I give it to different rescues different charities um, and so this is a big driving force behind what I do so as I said, I want to do one of these tips every month uh, just to add some value to the community. And I thought, you know, what better a day to begin than CX Day. So for October, we're going to be looking at a test taking strategy. When I took my test originally, I didn't really have a strategy. And I think it's important to go in with a system in your mind of how you're going to approach the exam because that can count for a few points here and there and that could make the difference between passing or failing. So what I want to talk about today is uh, three different rules that I've come up with. Uh, the 85% rule, the principles rule and the longest answer rule. So the 85% rule what this basically means is go through the question multiple times read it over and over again to make sure that you're not misreading it because sometimes it's very easy to miss out a word or two when you're reading and you're under pressure in an exam so the first part is make sure you actually understand the question once you know that you understand the question you have to ask yourself an honest question which is are you at least 85 percent sure of your answer now if you are then my advice is you commit, you select that answer, and you move on. You don't look back in any situation because all that's going to do is cause you to second guess yourself and it's going to cause you to slow down in the exam later on and lose focus. In all other situations, however, you need to mark the question. Let me show you what this actually looks like in practice. So I'm going to log into my simulator here. And I'm going to launch an exam. So the question comes up on the screen. You've got your four answers. So what I'm saying is if you're at least 85% sure, then you go ahead and you pick the answer and then you move on. However, when you get to the next question, when that pops up, if you're not one, if you're not 85% sure, then at that point, what you need to do is come here and mark the question and then move on to the next question. And the idea is that when you get to the very end, then you can come back and you can review all of your marked questions. The idea with the principles rule is to narrow down the options as far as you can on your own. And many people get to a point where they get down to two potential answers and they're not sure which one it should be. And then my advice is to use the 18 principles in my book to hopefully narrow them down to one. And the last thing I want to mention in this presentation is the longest answer rule. This is actually really straightforward and it comes from my days of uh, studying for the project management professional, the PMP exam. Um, one thing that people started to notice was that if you could get your answers down to two and you couldn't figure out which one it was and it literally was going to be like tossing a coin it actually made sense to pick the longest answer and in many cases or more cases than not shall we say that ended up proving to be the uh, the correct uh, correct approach so 
let's do a sample question and see if we can we can understand how these work so the sample question which of the following is the most accurate description of a good employee experience so I'm going to give you a few moments to read over the uh, the options and then I'll kind of walk through how we can apply the principles So looking at this, if I was taking this uh, exam and I had this question pop up, one thing that I would immediately see is um, answer B, the employee sees how well management treat them and other employees, and answer D, the company's core values align with the employees. These two answers feel much more realistic um, in terms of trying to describe an experience when we talk about the employee is just given benefits or the employee is given their own office, well, guess what? They may not actually think much of those benefits. They may not like the office. Maybe they want to be in a group setting or maybe the office is in a you know, really bad state. Sometimes you have to really you know think about things like that um, rather than just take these answers at face value. That will help you in the exam. So most people, I think, would probably rule out answers A and C, and then they would probably get confused between answers uh, B and D. And what I would say is this is where the principles would come in, because in answer D, yes, the company's core values may align with the employee. So let's say one of the core values is honesty, and the employee feels that honesty is something that means a lot to them. On paper, they can align, but in actuality, they may not. And that's kind of where I have a principle called action speak louder than words. And so that really would violate that principle. However, answer B, the employee sees how well management treat them and the other employees. That's an indication that they're actually reacting and passing judgment on the actions of the management. And so that shows them engaging in the experience. So of course that is the correct answer. And the reason is because employee experience is the sum of the various perceptions employees have about their interactions with the organization in which they work. So I hope that this was uh, helpful. I'll, po I'll post one of these um, every month and um, I hope that you guys get some value out of it. So again, happy CX day and uh, I'll see you again in a month.